Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our final session of 2020 NISA Primes. This session is featuring public agencies and business support services. If you have never joined any of our sessions so far, we've had our NISA Primes event since 2015. And the objective of this is to make sure that our industry prime contractors, concessionaires, public services, public support services, public agencies, and our airport departments can educate, network with the small business, local business community, and provide you resources and guidance to elevate your business. Without further ado, I'd like to bring from Small Business Development Center, Cheryl Brown to the stage. She will start off the session with a presentation. Second, we will have our panel, and third, we'll have business incentive credits. So please stay with us throughout this hour, and with, without further ado, take it away, Cheryl. Christine, thank you so much, and thank you to the San Diego International Airport for hosting uh, the Meet the Primes events. I know that in the past they've been so well received, so I wanna thank you, and thank you for letting us be part of this. So my name is Cheryl Brown and I'm a program advisor for the San Diego and Imperial Valley SBDC network. And we are a resource for small businesses, a no cost resource. I like the, my favorite four letter F word, free. All of our services are at no cost to you. And really what we do is provide small businesses with one-on-one -on -one advising, trainings, events and any other kind of support that we could provide to help you be successful with your business. And so we have a team of over a hundred different advisors that can support you in almost any area that you might need. Business planning, strategic planning, access to capital, uh, technology commercialization, marketing, QuickBooks, financial projections, financial statements, and of course, government contracting, federal, state, local, as well as multi-state. We are funded by the SBA, um, in addition to other funding partners, such as the State of California Department of General Services, State of California Governor's Office of Economic and Business Development, easy, go biz. <laughs> um, also with the County of San Diego, the City of San Diego, San Diego Unified School District, SANDAC, Caltrans, uh, you name it, we are getting funding from them so that we can provide these services at no cost to you. The services that we offer include connecting, connecting to capital events where we bring a number of different lending institutions into one place. And so you have an opportunity to ask them questions, identify which source might be the best option for you with financing. Because I will tell you, if there's one thing I can guarantee is that if you're gonna pursue contracts with any government entity, you are going to need cash, you're going to need capital. And so we provide these events uh, so that you can get an overview of the different opportunities that might be available for you. Similar to our connecting to capital events, we also have meet the buyer events, very similar to meet the prime events. We have both live and now on demand, thanks to Zoom and the technology that we have. So we have a number of on demand uh, meet the buyer events, including County of San Diego, North County Transit District, San Diego County Water Authority, San Diego Unified School District, the General Services Administration, and so many more. We also have a number of workshops, both live and on demand. Again, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of free workshops. We also do a program called Loan Tank, where it's kind of like the Shark Tank thing, only with lenders. So if you have a product or a service or a business that is in need of funding, and you'd like to be eligible for Loan Tank, definitely reach out to us and we can take an assessment and see if you're ready for that. And then finally, and probably where our, we have our most impact is our one-on-one -on -one advising. Right now, all of our one-on-one -on -one advising is being done remotely. So good thing is you can be in your jammies and you don't have to drive to any office, uh, but that's where we provide a lot of our support is that one-on-one -on -one advising because every business, every situation is different. And we wanna make sure that we're providing you with the guidance that's specific to your business and your challenges. So in 2020, um, through all those activities, we have been able to assist small businesses in uh, obtaining over 204 million dollars in contracts awarded to those small businesses. 
those those businesses are you know parties of one, parties two, sometimes dinners dinners for, you know for five, family feast for five. That's the reality. That's what's money in your pocket. So this year alone, despite the craziness, uh, we have been able to support and help small businesses gain $204 million, almost 205 contracts awarded. We've also helped to uh, small businesses to obtain almost $240 million in capital. That does include, uh, include the disaster relief uh, capital with the PPP and the idle loans, as well as local and community grants. Even through this craziness, uh, we've helped 221 new businesses get started. And so we help you with the startup phases, uh, getting your EIN, business bank account, filing your articles of incorporation, anything that might you might need to get your business started. We have supported over 50,000 jobs here in the San Diego and Imperial Valley County. And we have conducted 746 trainings and 23,000 hours of one-on-one -on -one advising. This by far has been our busiest year. Um, obvious reasons, we're here to support the small business community and address any kind of needs that they may have. And we are also here to adjust and pivot where we need to, like we have done with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So what does that mean to you? So workshops, government contracting series. It's an on-demand nine module series that takes you through soup to nuts to kind of get started. We also have start your business in a day workshops, 80 business development workshops, uh, workshops specific to COVID-19 and how to pivot your business. I was safe reopening workshops and trainings. We even have trainings on cybersecurity, human resources, uh, investor pitching. I mean, really with over a hundred professional advisors, the only things we can't do is we cannot provide you with legal or tax counsel, but we can at least give you some insight and give you questions to ask your, your professional. Our one-on-one -on -one advising is confidential, professional, practical, and now remote. And so all of our advising is designed for one thing in mind, and that is to move you forward every step of the way. So how do you get started? One of the things I would recommend is go to our website, uh, take a look at the different workshops. We have, a, again, thousands of them. You can also register in our system. That's gonna prompt our office coordinators to uh, get in touch with you with next steps. And you can also email us at centerinfo at maricosta.edu. That might be the most direct and then our office coordinator can then guide you from there and connect you with the most appropriate resource for you based on what you're looking to do. Once again, though, all of these services are at no cost to you. Bottom line, we're here to help you. Uh, we're here to help you uh, go through all of those you know, trials and tribulations and help you overcome those obstacles. We're here for you to schedule an appointment, answer your questions, really provide you with as much support as you need step by step, every step of the way. I have clients that I've been working with since 2007. Uh, they started with me, they had just started their business, we helped them start their business, and now they're currently contracting with a variety of different agencies throughout San Diego County. So our services don't have any kind of, I don't know, uh, expiration or anything like that. As long as you're moving forward, we're here to help you. So once again, thanks so much again for having me today. Um, my name is Cheryl Brown. I'm one of 100 advisors in our network. If there's anything we can do for you, please do let me know. Thank you, Cheryl. We have um, one quick question from our attendees. They'd like to know that registration web link again for SBDC. Um, I don't seem to have uh, the link myself. So if you wouldn't mind posting it on the chat, um, I think that would be helpful for the attendees. Absolutely. I will be more than happy to do that. I'll put them all in there for you. Sounds good. Um, and that's for Mary Beth. Um, she, she asked for the registration web link for SBDC and um, you might be hearing from her soon. <laughs> Sounds good. Look forward to helping everybody.
All right, sounds good. I think that's all the questions that we have um, for this uh, section um, at the moment. Maria, or actually, uh, Christine, back to you. Thank you so much, Cheryl, for that amazing presentation. It's so valuable for all the small businesses within Daniel County to know the excellent resource and guidance that you can provide to them at no cost at all. And thank you, Alma. Next up, we have our Public Agency Consortium Panel, or other known as PAC, if you've heard that. That is our, the name of all the different San Diego County um, agencies. And together, we put our heads together, we collaborate, we make sure that we work together to um, support the small local veteran business community. And so we have three panelists today that will share with you information on how to do business with their agency and so much more. I'd like to welcome to the spotlight, first panelist, we have Mr. Damian Singleton from the City of San Diego. Hey there, Christine, Hi, how are you? Doing great, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Great to hear. First question I have for you, describe your agency. Oh, well, um, I, as you know, my name is Damian Singleton. I'm a senior management analyst here in the city of San Diego's purchasing and contracting department, but uh, more specifically in the equal opportunity contracting department. And here in, um, in equal opportunity, we do contract compliance monitoring. We do um, uh, labor compliance monitoring. And uh, overall in the purchasing department, we're here to procure goods and to uh, uh, excuse me, purchase goods and to award service contracts. Um, I've also spent some time over in the construction contracting um, department. So I am familiar with the construction contracting process and, and how that uh, goes as well. So be happy to answer any questions anyone has as we go along. Great, thank you. My next question for you is, what kind of preference programs or certifications does the city of San Diego offer? So the city of San Diego has a preference program. It's the small local business enterprise program, which we oversee here in equal opportunity contracting. Um, it is a, a preference program to city of San Diego contracts only, and it provides a, a preference to um, our small and local business community. It is race and gender neutral. Um, it's based on income, so you'd have to be within our income caps, which mirror the Department of General Services State of California's micro uh, income caps. And you have to be in business at least one year. So the three uh, components to it, you're in business one year, you're in San Diego County, and you fall your three-year average gross income fall within our income caps. And we also, uh, in addition to providing that certification through the city of San Diego, we also recognize Caltrans uh, certifications. As mentioned earlier, we recognize the DGS state of California's micro certification, um, uh, city of LA and uh, the CPUC. So we do recognize all of the certifications uh, by those certifying bodies. That's wonderful. I'm, great. I'm glad to hear that there's uh, reciprocity with San Diego, City of San Diego and recognizing all those different certifications so mm -hmm. that um, a small and local business doesn't have to um, apply for so many. Um, my next question for you would be, um, what kind of upcoming opportunities does a small or local business have with the city? Can you tell us of anything exciting they should know about? <laughs> well, um, all of our formal solicitations, as most of our um, PAC agency, starts off uh, in planning bids. That's our official system of record. That's where we um, electronically advertise our goods and services, our construction, our consultant. All of our formal bids are, are advertised there. Um, how you get involved with the City of San Diego, you definitely need to start with creating a um, vendor profile on the city of San Diego's uh, vendor portal with Planet Bids. Um, once you are certified as a small local business enterprise, we send out a weekly upcoming bid list just to kind of let our SLBEs know 
the different procurements uh, for construction that are coming up. Um, the most of the other purchasing related um, solicitations can be found on Planet Bids, but we do try to do a little bit of incentivizing for our SLBEs to uh, ensure that they get the information and uh, they're not they're not passed up in the uh, in the award process or bidding process, I should say. Thank you so much, Damien. So as you've heard, um, we highly encourage you to take a look and consider all the criteria to apply for the SLBE certification through the city. That can give you a leg up with opportunities to ascend. So thank you so much um, for being here. And I would like to welcome Karen Linehan from City Unified School District to the spotlight next. Hi, Karen. Hi, How are you? Hi, Christine. Thanks for inviting us. We're so happy to join you. And thanks to everybody for being interested in San Diego Unified School District's project. Of course, we're so glad to have you here and also to have Alma with our Q&A. With this partnership, we wouldn't have been able to pull this all off. So thank you so much for that. Uh, first question, I'd like you to describe your agency. What does the City Unified School Dis District do? What are you all about? So I always like to preface these conversations that we are really here with San Diego Unified School District's Facility Planning and Construction Department. Um, and our department is the, to design and construct clean, safe, environmentally friendly facilities that encourage successful teaching and learning. So it's all about the kids, it's all about the teachers, and it's all about getting those facilities just right for learning. Now, facility planning construction, we call it FPC, it oversees and administers the planning, construction, and coordination of district facilities. And that includes facility improvement, maintenance projects, as well as larger, more complex capital projects. So within all those are a lot of opportunities for small and diverse businesses. Um, I manage the business outreach program in support of facilities planning and construction. And our work predominantly includes the capital improvement bond program, which you might know as propositions F and Z and measure YY, and that's where we get the money from San Diego voters. Um, we have significant small and emerging business participation goals on all of our projects. So the business outreach program's object objectives include promoting business with the district, informing contractors and subcontractors about bid opportunities, connecting contractors with each other and with projects, and developing a robust and diverse bidding environment. And we love that competition. And an important piece of this effort involves engaging with traditionally underrepresented, business with community, women-owned, minority-owned, small, disabled businesses, um, all those diverse um, businesses we have opportunities for you. Thank you so much. That's so exciting that SDUSD um, basically builds quality neighborhood schools and all the maintenance and just new buildings throughout the county. And that's very exciting to have that for the children and youth. So thank you for describing your agency. Um, could you describe any exciting upcoming huge projects or even small projects that you can elaborate on? So as far as projects go, um, right now, at the end of this year, we've been doing a lot of planning and budgeting, and I think there's only one like year the bus did out, <laughs> out right now. But we are on Planet Biz, and you can see on the slide um, the portal to go ahead and register in our vendor portal, um, that tiny URL there. Um, First thing you want to do is, is get registered on Planet Bids so that you can see the bids. Um, so you won't see a lot right now. But what we do have coming up for next year is pretty significant. So um, for those of you who don't know about our Leap Leap Back program, we have a very large projects of around $7 million up to $130 million projects, significantly improving specific uh, campuses. And within those, we have um, small business goals and diverse business goals on all those projects. And so it, it offers a lot of opportunities for really small and emerging businesses to get engaged. We have about 38 lease back projects coming online next year. So lots of opportunities, as well as lots of time to figure out how to get engaged with our clients. You'll also see some design bid build projects coming up, both large and small, supporting both FPC and regular general maintenance on our campuses. 
Um, we've got some photovoltaic work, some fencing projects, and some, oh, some joint use fields. So tons of stuff coming up next year. So the best way to find out about that is to get on Planet Bid. Yes, everyone get on Planet Bid. That is the number one tip of today's session. Um, finally, my last question for you. Um, what kind of certifications does your agency honor? And if there are any preference programs set aside, tell us a little bit more about that. So San Diego Unified School District does not have any preference programs or set aside programs. We have a very robust, uh, what we call EBE program that stands for Emerging Business Enterprise, but it includes all those categories that I mentioned, small disabled veteran, minority owned women owned businesses. Uh, any other kind of XBE diverse business category. If it's bona fide certification, we accept it. Um, and we um, also use certifications from various other public agencies throughout the state. So if you are certified in one of those categories, um, chances are we'll accept your certifica certification. Um, I was gonna tell you, we have um, our robust program. So we have a 3% requirement for disabled veteran participation on all of our construction projects. So in addition to that, every year we sort of look at the market and analyze it and see what we've done previously and um, we set goals. So the goals for 2020, for disabled veterans, we had a 5% goal, which we're meeting right now. We also set goals for minority women-owned small businesses and those um, are set at 2% minority, 7% women-owned and 45% small business. Those goals total uh, about 50% EBE participation. So we may not have a set aside program, but we're very serious and committed to getting that engagement and making sure that small businesses know how to do business with San Diego Unified, how to track our projects, how to get connected with our prime contractors, and know about all the things that are required in order to bid and just making those connections so that you have all the arsenal in your um, toolkit on how to do business. So one of the other things that you should be, uh, if you're a contractor, you should know about is, is getting pre-qualified. So um, it's one of those other requirements, the pre-qualification email here, you can email Christina at prequal at sandy.net to get that process started. And I highly recommend if you're here, take a screenshot, take a photograph of this um, page right now, these are really key um, links. So um, yeah, I think that, that about sum summarizes. I just I can't uh, say enough how both uh, myself, Alma, and Sydney were very committed to it. So if you have a question or you want to know more about the program or how you can get to know certain prime contractors, just send us an email. Thank you so much, Karen, for letting us know about all we need to know about doing business with the school district. Um, love the commitment and the huge aspirational goals that you have on your project minoring DBEs. And thank you again for being here today. Appreciate it. You are welcome. Up next, I'd love to have Mr. Joe Rubio to the spotlight. Joe is from the U.S. Veteran Business Alliance or other known as USBBA. Joe, thank you so much for being here today. Could you tell us about your organization for everyone? Sure, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for uh, having me, uh, allowing me a chance to speak about USBBA, uh, the San Diego chapter. I, I am the San Diego chapter president currently. And USBBA, in essence, is a veteran business advocacy um, network engagement um, uh, organization. We are a nonprofit. It's a nationally based organization that essentially provides uh, resources to veteran businesses um, in order to succeed, no matter what uh, level of uh, business point your uh, veteran business may be in, whether it be uh, just a conceptual startup onto you know, a full on operational business um, small, medium, or large. Um, I, I will say that the, the value added of our um, organization is that we are a tight niche 
uh, network of veteran businesses that can share information back and forth on what it is like to succeed or go through hurdles as a as a veteran business owner um, or someone who may be thinking of just be opening up their own business. Um, we definitely welcome those those folks and provide um, services. Great, thank you so much for describing your organization. I'm so glad that there's a network for veteran business out there to feel connected and be in the know with other veteran businesses as well so that they could lean on each other, build that rapport and support each other in these times of need to um, grow. So thank you for that. Um, and do you have any typical type of buyers or large business partners within your organization? Oh, most definitely so. Yeah, another part of the network component of it is that we provide access. So access to large buyers such as, you know, the San Diego um, uh, International Airport, San Diego Port Authority, uh, NAFAC, uh, GSA, Caltrans. And also we provide access to larger businesses, Balfour Beatty, AT&T, um, you name it, expands the gamut of uh, uh, national uh, network to large businesses, and then also network to large businesses within the San Diego area, actually throughout California, and to agencies throughout California. So we provide, you know, that bridge and that sort of one-on-one -on -one -on -one access behind the scenes to those agencies and large, larger businesses. Wow, thank you so much for that. I'm learning so much I did not know. And um, would one have to be a veteran business or service, service disabled veteran owned small business to join your chapter group at all? Uh, not at all, actually. We welcome non-veteran uh, business owners to be part of our, our business alliance and then also um, non-veteran large business owners as well, or agencies as well to join. And the reason being is that, you know, we, we, our core membership is the veteran businesses. But if you're joining being an outsider, uh, outside agency or uh, non veteran business, you will have access to the uh, plethora of, of our uh, veteran business network. So in essence, if you're looking for you know, a specific type of subcontractor or prime contractor that is a veteran business owner, we provide you access to that membership list or we can connect you to a specific type of contractor that you may be looking for, whether it be construction, onto sending uh, electrical equipment, onto uh, consulting, wherever it may be, we, we, we have access to the multitude of veteran businesses that are part of our membership. Thank you, Joe. I'm glad that you brought that up because we've had a strong partnership with your organization, San Diego Airport and USBBA. We've been able to promote our events, um, our new local business enterprise certification, and be able to combine powers to attend your chapter meetings. And then having that inclusive inclusion and diversity, um, bringing up new ideas has really um, been great success for both of us. So thank you for your partnership and sharing with us about your organization, how to do business. And um, hopefully everyone out there could partner up with USBBA with um, all the information that Joe has shared with us today. So thank you again for being here with us. And I'd like to bring Alma to the spotlight so we can now do the Q&A part of the panel. Alma? Sure. Thank you so much, Christine. Um, this one's going to be actually really easy because there aren't any uh, Q and uh, questions, cues for, for any A's. Um, but I will ask uh, Karen and Damien to start. Uh, if this was a question that was asked in the earlier panel, if you wouldn't mind just giving us kind of like a brief summary of the different types of scope that uh, vendor that that the agency is looking for in vendors. Um, one thing that was helpful for folks was, you know, clarifying, you know, does Caltrans actually go out for roofs and um, 
and all that kind of stuff. So I know that as a school district, Karen, and in us uh, working together, we buy so many things at the school district. You and I focus mostly on construction, but if you wouldn't mind just uh, speaking a little bit to what the school district procures, um, what we can help folks with, uh, and, um, and then we'll move on to Damien. We, everything. I mean, our, like, our whole site modernization projects have everything from uh, framing and roofing and painting and signage and signage design and uh, ADA design and uh, like everything that you can think of. And when it comes to materials as well, if any of you out there are material suppliers, um, same thing, a lot of construction materials. Occasionally, um, we look at Planet Bids, you'll see that we have some standalone uh, trade projects or some standalone um, supplies purchasing. We'll buy everything from blocks to doors and windows, um, just like everything that you can think of. Um, do you want to touch on anything more than that, Alma? No, I think that's a that's a pretty good summary. You know, I uh, for the vendors out there that do that work outside of construction. You know, obviously the school district buys a lot more stuff: janitorial, paper, gas for our vehicles, and you know all kinds buses. of stuff. Like right now, we're looking for buses. <laughs> I did get a private question. If you if you'd let me read that, is um, it from Roxanne? It is. All right. Um, yeah, if you'd like, uh, I know that there that we're limited on what we can say because it's an upcoming RFP, but I'll, I'll let you I'll let you address Roxanne's question for okay. sure. Okay. So she says um, on our upcoming PMPM RFP, will the RFP limit the participation to only sub consultant firms that have school district experience, or will there be an opportunity for a firm with airport project and construction management experience to participate in providing services to the school district? So to, to clarify, this is an upcoming solicitation. I didn't really mention the A and E part of the A, E, and C. So with architects and engineers, we have the same opportunities. They're a little more sporadic because they're about two to four year contracts. But we do have an upcoming contract that is highly sought after. Um, she's called it the CMPM, and it's actually something that we call the Supplemental Services Contract. And that is to provide PM, CM, inspection, all kinds of professional services support. We have literally on-site integrated staff working with us that are uh, contract staff. So the RFP this year will not be an RFP. It will be an RSFQ, uh, request for a statement of qual. And it will not be, we will not limit subcontractors, subconsultants. So the primes will have a variety of requirements they'll need to meet. We tend to like local firms. Um, we tend to love firms that have experience working on our projects, but as you as a sub would be contracted to the prime consultant there, it's up to them to vet you. So if you have the qualifications and you can deliver, um, that's, where your sale, that's where your sales pitch really lies. Um, so uh, take the experience that you have working on the airport and um, go to those, uh, the incumbents, I'll let you know, our AECOM and um, Harrison Associates and Gafcon. Um, I've heard we've got some more in the mix. If you want to reach out to others that we've heard from, we've heard from Kitchell and Jacobs and Cumming and CBRE Education. So um, those are the firms that you want to reach out to to become partners. Um, and it really, really will be up to them to decide whether or not your qualifications um, fit what they're looking for in the team. Thank you, Karen. Um, and then Damien, if you would, uh, wouldn't mind just giving us a little bit of uh, details on the type of uh, scope that you're looking for in vendors. Um, I know, again, the city is another one that buys quite a few, um, that procures quite a few items and services and contracting needs. So um, why don't you give us just a quick summary? We do. We, similar to uh, Karen, we, we buy everything, you know, paper, vehicles, um, chemicals, um, uh, park and rec uh, landscaping services, um, roofing services. We we purchase everything. We um we bought a helicopter I think a couple of years ago. Um, it, it, the list goes on and on. Um, security services uh, in purchasing security, um, janitorial, and. I'd say those are probably some of our biggest services. 
here. As far as goods, uh, we do have a um, contract uh, with um, Staples. So we're required to purchase a lot of our um, office supplies and, and things of that nature through Staples first. And of course, if they don't have what we need, we then can go out to other vendors. So that that's a little, um, that, that keeps us from doing uh, too much of those type of um, good services or those good contracts uh, with new vendors typically because of that big contract. But um, we, we procure a lot of things. Uh, right now we have in construction, we have the pure water project that's going on right now, uh, over a billion billion dollar project. And right now we're building facilities and we're always looking for pipeline, contractors, streets. Um, we do a lot of consulting contracts. So if you are a engineer, project management, um, environmental, uh, surveying, landscaping, architects. We see a lot of those uh, services on our consulting contracts. So it, it just varies. It depends on what type of solicitations are, are, are out on the street at the moment. But at any given time, we can we can go out on the street for a number of different items. Uh, and hopefully that, that brief list of, of things kind of gives our viewers an idea, but it's, it's really kind of hard to go through everything that we buy. Uh, computer services, uh, um, uh, we just had our IT contract come up, I believe, um, big vendors. I think we're big CGI and a lot of the big vendors are, are going to on that big one. But um, I'd say I recommend that folks check Planet Bids probably three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, just to see what's out there, purchasing, consultant and uh, construction, and you may be surprised at some of the things that we uh, solicit. Thank you. Yes, you know, I know it's it's hard to kind of encompass everything that the city buys, um, but uh, just to give folks an idea, you know, that it's not just about construction. Sometimes we talk a lot about construction or contracting with professional services related to construction, um, but, some, but it's because that's where probably a little, there's a little more, um, uh, projects or money or, you know, for, for Karen and I, we work for the facilities uh, department directly. So that's why you're always going to hear us talk about construction needs. Um, but there's much more that's available to you. We can point you um, in the right direction if you're outside of construction. But just so you know that, that yes, sometimes some of the public agencies do, do more than, than that. Um, thank you so much for that Damien and also for providing me a, a, a segue into a quick next question um, about planet bids which is a quick answer someone has a concern about it um, about Java since it's going away December 31st from what I understand planet bids will be uh, adjusting that uh, so all of us that are using planet bids are sticking to planet bids uh, planet bids will adjust their platform uh, to the change that's happening with Java uh, December 31st or Flash. I think it's Flash platform. Right. Um, so yeah, so just uh, I think that was Michael that had that concern. So um, uh, that is it for our question and answer section here. Thank you so much uh, uh, for working with us. And Christine, I'm not sure if I either hand it back to you or to Ashley. Either way, thank you. Uh, Thank you for questions, uh, attendees. Thank you so much, Alma. Thank you, all panel members. Um, I would like to welcome to the spotlight. And next up, we have business incentive credit, Ms. Ashley Oliverio. Um, she's going to teach us all about navigating through incentives and credits for your business and to provide that cash boost. Um, for you to recover money, why not, right? Let's learn about something new, you never know. So I'd love to introduce you to the floor and thank you so much for being here. Go ahead and take it away. Hey everyone, so glad to be here. What an honor to be with everyone. So everyone, I'm with Business Incentive Credits. And I hope to enlighten you on some things that you probably didn't know until today. There are government programs that incentivize you and actually you can capture and recover 20 to 60% of your paid federal and state programs. So we ask employers all the time, are you getting the cash incentives and rebates that you're entitled to? 
And even if you think you are, the answer is probably no. And so we followed up with, if the government was holding a large check with your name on it, when would you wanna know about that? And as you can tell and imagine, the answer is, well, right now. Billions of dollars are paid out every year, but billions more are unclaimed. According to many financial publications, only 5% of eligible businesses claim what they're entitled to. That means that 95% are unclaimed every year. And these are eligible businesses, not the ones that aren't qualified, but the ones that are. And that's what we try to help with. Let me give you a little bit of history. Back in the late 70s and early 80s, our economy was in turmoil. Double digit inflation, manufacturing was going overseas. With that, manufacturing jobs and business owners needed help. So under President Reagan and his administration, uh, they started passing tax laws in 1981. It was known as the ERTA and actually the Kemp Roth tax cut. The only problem with this is they were only limited by business types and sizes. So if you were in the right industry or weren't large enough, you would not benefit from these favorable tax laws. But they were so favorable and effective that year after year they were repassed. And fast forward to 2016, it was made a part of the permanent tax code with President Obama and it expanded to include most businesses. It was no longer industry specific. It was based on the business behaviors and activities, what the business was doing inside of their business. And then in 2018, under President Trump, it expanded even further with uh, tax overhaul programs. And one thing to, to notice about this particular timeline is that these incentive programs have been enjoyed overwhelmingly bipartisan support for nearly 40 years. But even so, most businesses have never heard about them. And not that there hasn't been articles written throughout the years, whether it's Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, Fox, uh, you name it, Forbes, articles have been written, videos have been done to show that these incentive programs are for businesses. This uh, article was done last year. It was done by CBS News. It highlighted uh, 60 of America's biggest companies paid no federal income tax in 2018. And in this article, they highlighted Amazon and Netflix. They both paid no income tax, but uh, Netflix got $22 million back and Amazon got $128 million back in these incentives, these rebates, rewards, how are they doing that? How are they getting away with that? Well, they have the bank of attorneys and CPAs to nickel and dime everything out of the government. But these same laws that apply to them, they also apply to the small and mid-sized businesses as well. This was done by Forbes in 2013. Eight myths that keep businesses from claiming the R&D tax credit. They highlighted this credit. I'm gonna read some of these for you, some of the myths. One, the, the R&D tax credit is only for companies inventing something new. Not true. It's also for companies that are improving, modifying an existing product, their pot process flow, um, making, for an example, your product qu quicker, greener, quicker um, are all el eligible as well. Number two, the R&D tax credit is for companies with laboratory and test tubes. Wrong again. It's also to uh, encourage uh, applied sciences as well, known scientific principles, problem solving on the shop floor, field, site, behind the computer, all may be eligible for this R&D tax credit. Number three, the R&D tax credit isn't for my, uh, my company and my industry. Uh, well, that's part of the problem is most businesses, they self-censor themselves. They walk away. They don't even look at it when they may, very well could be qualified. Number four, the R&D tax credit is only for big companies. Again, wrong. It's from a range from small all the way to big uh, companies that can qualify. Number five, the R&D tax credit won't help with my state taxes. That's not true. We do have state taxes in California and all across the nation. And several states are looking into it, expanding an R &D, the R&D tax credit or creating one. Number six, the R&D tax credit 
won't help with my bottom line. Well, this is not a deduction. This is a credit um, where a credit reduces your taxes dollar for dollar. So yes, if you qualify, it directly affects the tax liability you are required to pay. Number seven, it's all too good to be true. It must be snake oil. Well, this is probably our biggest objective. And so um, benefits thousands of companies every year, all the way since 1981, and we saw that before. And so even though the IRS isn't just giving this tax credit away, you have to know, you have to have the proper documentation of your activities and your behaviors to correctly apply the law. Number eight, we're gonna have tax reform and this IRD tax credit is going away. Well, um, this part, uh, bless your heart, the R&D tax credit is a close third to motherhood and apple pie when it comes to support in Washington, D.C. The R&D tax credit is supported on a bipartisan basis in both houses by Obama and not just this administration, but all previous administrations when it was in place in 1981. And we saw this on the timeline. Most experts predict it will stay in place even with tax reform in fact, it could be well expanded in which it was. So there's over 7,000 local, state, and federal programs. These are some just to name a few. The R&D tax credit known as the research and development credit. It was also known as the research and experimentation credit. The employee reimbursement program, it actually focuses on the training, on the job training that you're doing, leadership uh, management, um, and so many others. Federal hiring credits, there's the Green Energy 179D actually focuses on um, how you're making your, your products, your process um, in your business uh, greener. Domestic production is also the manufacturing credit. And then the work opportunity tax credit is also known as the WOTC credit. And this actually targets groups, um, employment uh, for employees that face barriers. So why haven't I heard about this before? Well, you do need to know who to ask, why to ask and how much to ask for. And that's where we come in. We are the conduit between these government programs and the small to mid-sized business like yours and it is a specialty and that's um and that's where we come in so we have helped over 5000 clients in the last 17 years recover over 100 million dollars and this is just a snapshot of just a few of our clients that we've helped throughout the years now look at the different types of businesses from contracting to agriculture manufacturing consulting firms, food processing, funeral homes, medical fields, staffing firms, and much, much more. And also notice the dollar amount from the few thousand well into six figures. And one thing is absolutely true about all of our clients. They did not know this money was theirs to claim. So I actually wanted to share a testimonial actually during the recession. Uh, we have many testimonials, but one that really stuck out was during uh, the recession in 2008. We had a client, a couple that had a business up in the Santa Ana area, Santa Ana area and they took a complete pay cut for two years. They didn't lay off any of their employees and they were very proud of that. And so um, not receiving anything for two years, our VP Greg happened to go up and tell them that they were gonna receive $64,000. The wife, she lost it. She completely started crying. She just said, you know, you don't know what this means to us. And he said, we do. We know this is a tremendous help for you, your business and your family. And so we like to be that resource. Um, and here are some other testimonials one from a construction business, a surgeon, and a landscaping business as well. Here is another testimonial from a transporting business right here in San Diego as well. So it's a simple process to learn if you're eligible for these incentive credits, rewards, and refunds. We gather some documentation from you. We look inside your business. We dig down deep to see what you're doing in your business and the business 
uh, behaviors. We also gather some financial information. We look at your corporate and personal returns for your business. And uh, we can go three years back retroactive and four years back for state. And this takes about a week to find out if you're eligible and, and the amount. And we do give you a very conservative number and there is no cost or obligation to find out if you're eligible. If you are eligible and we move forward, we do charge a percentage um, at this point we do all the calculation. It is forensic accounting that we do. We do the calculations. We enter it into our proprietary software and we double check with our CPAs everything before it's sent out. And this is about a two to three week process that we do. And then everything is sent out to the government. And the government does about a four to six month vetting process. And this money that comes back is with no strings attached. attached um, tax-free and with interest. And the interest on top of the money that you're receiving is about five to 10% that we've seen in some of these checks. And there's no strings attached. You literally can do what you want. You can put that into buying another equipment. You can hire that extra person. You can take a vacation. Literally, this is your money that the government owes you. So I'd like to address some questions. We get this some uh, frequent questions. Why didn't my CPA tell me about this? And um, isn't that what I pay my uh, accountant to do? Here's a video slide. Now to be clear, the government is not in the habit of sending out money without a request. You have to know who to ask, why to ask, and how much to ask for. That brings up another question that business owners ask. Why didn't my accountant bring this up to me? Isn't that what I'm paying my CPA for? First, let me defend your accountant. There are 5 million words in the U.S. tax code, and nobody can know every one of them. Besides, if you're like me, you gather numbers annually for your business, your income, expenses, payroll, purchases, all your financial numbers, right? Then your CPA takes your numbers and it puts your numbers into their software and prints out your return. Now, that's an oversimplification, but is that a pretty fair assessment? So when you gave your CPA your numbers to put in their software, did you include the numbers for these entitlements and incentive credits? Probably not. So even if their software did calculate these credits, and most accounting software does not, you didn't give them the numbers, so they couldn't calculate what's available for you. Ours is a specialized proprietary software updated every year to locate these credits for businesses like yours. And to be clear, we're not interested in taking the place of your CPA. In fact, we don't do taxes. Your accountant is like a primary care physician. Your family doctor knows your body from toenails to earlobes. But if you need open heart surgery, you're not going to get that from your family doctor. In fact, your physician is smart enough to refer you to a heart surgeon because they know that's what you need. And that's what we do. We open up the chest, we pull apart the sternum, and we use the specialized tools and skills that we've honed for over a decade to find millions of dollars for thousands of clients. In fact, the CPAs we work with tell us they don't have the time or resources to research all the government programs available, much less spend the dozens of hours it would take to prepare the documents for each of their business clients. When CPAs refer their business clients to us and we uncover hidden money, that CPA becomes a hero in the eyes of their clients. And best of all is there's no charge to find out if you have cash incentive dollars due and how much it should be. Another question we get asked is, will this trigger an audit? Let me so show you another video clip.
Senator Chuck Grassley was at a conference speaking to uh, a group of business owners and accountants. I'd like to read this for you. I've always believed that the tax code should encourage the success of small and medium businesses and for creating jobs for small and medium businesses because they are the economic engine of our economy. Business owners should learn about these tax incentives meant for you. There's a long list of tax provisions that provide much needed tax relief to businesses and individuals. What worries me is that many of you here, business owners and accountants, too often think that these tax incentives, that these just happen for big corporations. I want to impress on you that nothing could be further from the truth. The IRS re recently reported that 85% of the R&D credit went to the largest companies of America. He reasoned the largest companies were more active than the small and medium companies implying for these credits. Too often, small and medium businesses just simply are not taking advantage of these R&D and many other incentives. A comedian once said, 90% of life is just showing up. The same is too with tax. The small and medium businesses need to show up and take advantage of these benefits. So my message to you is learn about the tax incentives that are available. These incentives can help your business succeed and thrive. We have located millions of dollars in government incentives for business owners across the country. Take advantage of our no cost, no obligation feasibility study and find out if the government is holding a large check with your name on it. Do we have any questions at this part, at this point? Sorry there, it looks like my system was a little slow to <laughs> log back on. Um, it, not any uh, questions uh, really. I think some folks were just interested in whether or not this is a paid service or how, how is it that folks would um, be able to get some of these business incentives that you're talking about? Yeah, so uh, to find out if, you're, if you are entitled to these uh, re re refunds and rewards, we don't charge at all just to find out. Um, but if we move forward and there is a recovery, we do charge 33%. Excellent. I think you went over that um, as far as, the, you know, the percentage that's or that there is a percentage that's taken out. So that's good to know that, you know, just to find out it's free. Um, and and if there is uh, something that is owed back or incentives that that can be taken advantage of um, that uh, that uh, that's where payment would apply um, in a sense. Um, as, uh, Ashley, it looks like we are we have some folks that are asking for some contact information from you as well. If you wouldn't mind sharing uh, your preferred method of contact on the chat, that would be helpful for our attendees. And folks are just saying that this has been really informative um, and uh, just thank you for your time so much. Thank you. All right, Christine, back to you. Thank you so much, Ashley, for that great presentation. We learned so much and excited to share with businesses another way of getting a cash boost for their company. 
um, like to take a moment to say thank you to all the participants and attendees that have attended all the different sessions within the five days of our Meet the Primes event. I um, want to thank all our support team members for your time and commitment, endless hours of the planning, all the dry runs um, from thinking Sydney, Alma, Maisel, Maria, Riku, Jose, Irma, Annie, Cynthia. Um, thank you to all the panel members as well, Damon, Karen, Joe, and Ashley. Uh, we cannot have done it without everyone to be a part of this event, our first virtual event, and we know more each and every day of how to handle with technology. Maria, would you like to come to the spotlight as well to say your thank yous? Yes. Um, again, thank you, everybody. Like Zine said, we couldn't have done this without your help. Um, we literally took this and um, even though we downsized it, we still were over our heads with it. But here it is, the last day of our event, and we're very happy with the numbers and uh, a few um, hiccups, but nothing major that you know, we could say, oh, we, it, we can move forward. So again, thank you for all your support and your participation. And hope yeah. to see you next year in person. Make sure to take our survey. We'll send that out and ask us any questions um, with the recordings. We'll send out that information. So hope to see you all next year and take care. Thank you so much again.